मैं तो डेली यार डेली में रहता हूँ और रेडियो फीजी बहुत रेडियो फीजी रोज सुनता हूँ रेडियो फीजी टू देश की धड़कन Good evening, Fiji. In this bulletin, expanded FMPF payouts due to COVID-19. Man charged for alleged electoral offences. And UK rejects Fijian troops' claims. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. For first tonight, a major fire broke out in the heart of Suva as thousands of people made their way home from work. The Value City outlet opposite the Suva bus stand caught fire late this afternoon. Firefighters responded quickly to try and bring the blaze under control. FBC News understands that more than 50 food kiosks and handicraft outlets nearby were also destroyed in the blaze. When this bulletin was prepared this evening, the Value City outlet was still ablaze. About 87,489 applications for COVID-19 unemployment assistance has been received by the Fiji National Provident Fund. Economy Minister Ayas Said Kayum has highlighted that $49 million has been paid out to 78,519 applicants, while the remainder will be processed by the end of next week. Lena Reese has more. With the first phase of unemployment assistance ending on the 29th of this month, the second phase in partnership with FNPF will begin soon after. It includes all those people who have already received assistance. And of course it will include any persons that have become unemployed since then. The economy minister confirms the criteria for who qualifies for COVID-19 withdrawals has also been expanded. The members will be able to access an additional $1,100 if they are now unemployed due to COVID-19. Government will provide a top up to all those that have less than $1,100 in their general account. Saikyum says through the system, those left jobless due to COVID-19 will continue to receive assistance over a 10-week period. Those who have not withdrawn at all, they can go in like the other in the first place, withdraw $1,100 lump sum. Of course, if they don't have that amount, government will top it up for them. FNPF members who have exhausted their accounts or have less than $35 will also be paid $220 for the first fortnight. They do not have to come to us or come to FNPF to file any right, fill out any forms because we know they have less than $35 in their account and they will be automatically, $220 will be deposited into their bank accounts. There's about 20,000 people in that category. The government will next week pay out $4.4 million to 20,000 people, while a new initiative to assist SMEs will be announced on Sunday. Lena Reese, FBC News. A 64-year-old man appeared in the Suva Magistrates Court today for an alleged offence relating to the 2018 general election. The Fiji Independent Commission Against Corruption charged Vijay Krishna with one count of making a false statement under the Political Parties Act of 2013. Pranita Prakash reports. It is alleged that Krishna published false information on social media site Facebook relating to the 2018 elections which he knew to be false or had no reason to believe to be true. FICAC lawyers informed the court that the first phase disclosures have already been served. There was no objection to bail, however, FICAC asked for strict bail conditions. Krishna informed the court that he will seek legal aid assistance. Resident magistrate Joseph Dalrewa released Krishna on $500 bail with one surety. He has been instructed not to re-offend, to report to the FICAC office every Friday and to surrender all travel documents. A stop departure order has also been issued. Magistrate Dorewa further ordered Krishna to deactivate his social media accounts and to provide evidence of the same by next Friday. The matter has been adjourned to 15th of July. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. A Fijian police officer currently in India with his family has tested positive for COVID-19. The officer, based at the Lombasa police station, flew out to New Delhi on February 13th to undergo medical treatment. 
On May 18th, medical clearance tests were conducted, and the results which came out three days later returned positive for COVID-19. His wife and daughter, also in India, tested negative. The police officer is in stable condition at the Max Hospital in New Delhi. The UK's Ministry of Defence has rejected claims brought by eight Fijian former Commonwealth soldiers who say a systematic failure of the immigration system left them classified as illegal immigrants. Representing the former soldiers, lawyer Vinita Templeton says they are now committed to pursuing a judicial review with more soldiers coming forward with similar cases. Maggie Boyle tells us more. The pre-action protocol for the pending class action was initially sent to the UK government in February. Last night, they responded with a blanket rejection. You know, the, the, the letter pretty much um, stated, well, you know, this is, this is not a systemic of, um, breach, if anything. Um, at most, it's maladministration and the um, assertion in fact, the main assertion made is that it's an issue that's not justiciable, meaning that it's not something that should be brought to court. Leading the Fijian soldiers' defence, Vinita Templeton says the response only further commits them to the cause. We are in a position now of preparing to issue um, judicial review. Um, we remain committed to doing that and, um, in fact, um, more committed than ever, really. Um, and, yeah. That, that that's the next step. NGO Commonwealth Neglected Veterans says it's evident that more Fijians could also have a case to answer. You know, these, these veterans, veterans that, that have returned, returned home to Fiji to step, step forward, forward because, because what, what we, we are, are doing here is, is that we are campaigning for justice and we are challenging the system that had failed them. The group of Fijian soldiers all served in the UK Army on tours in Iraq and Afghanistan for more than seven years before being discharged. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. There are more than 400 beggars in towns and cities around the country. Social Welfare Director Rupeni Fatiaki has revealed to FBC News that some of them are professional beggars who even own property. Sainani Boyle reports. The ministry's database of beggars include the homeless, children beggars, part-time beggars and professional beggars. And say that you know, there are professional beggars, you know, these are the people who are, you know, they, they are, you know, they come in in the mornings, they get dropped, they get picked in the evenings, so they come in, they beg, they go back home, uh, they are homes, and most of these people we have profiled, most of them have homes families, relatives, some of them who had properties and rent, uh, you know, and we have warned them. The Social Welfare Department is advising Fijians to first verify the relevant information before giving arms to any beggar. Fatiaki says in some instances, children are used by parents to beg for money, and this is illegal. We use children uh, to sit next to them, you know, I mean, with us, you know, as uh, you know, with the community, you know, we have, you know, when you see children, you, you know, you have a kind of, you know, compassion and you want to give, you want to help. This is illegal and uh, they should be penalized. I think they should be taken into task to reduce these cases. It should be investigated uh, through the Ministry of Social Affairs and also the police department. Some of the men and women found begging on the streets have mental illnesses, but attempts by the social welfare department to get them to care facilities have been unsuccessful. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Up ahead, new policy to protect iguanas. And Dudley High School goes regional. Radio Fiji One, A new policy to ensure the protection and conservation of four native iguana species has been launched in Vanuilevu. The conservation and protection of Fiji's endangered iguana species policy will provide the legal guidance and support for conservation of the species and improving public knowledge. It will also prioritize efforts towards recovery and management of the species. Eleanor Rangai View has more.
These endangered iguana species include the Lao banded iguana, the Fijian banded iguana, the Ngao iguana, and the Fijian crested iguana. The new policy launched on Fiji's first iguana sanctuary at Yandua Tamba Island in Boa will ensure that these four species are protected at all costs. This shows how much of a significance we will continue to provide and care for our species. This policy is geared towards not just protecting the species but enhance its, thri its, its thri thriving so it will multiply and flourish. The International Union hey. for Conservation of Nature, IUCN, has listed the Fijian crested iguana, scientifically known as the Brachylophus vitiansis, as critically endangered. Fiji currently has only about 13,000 of these left, 12,000 of which are living in this sanctuary at Yandua Tamba Island. Although the population of crested iguanas here on Yandua Tamba is currently thriving and secure, it is still vulnerable to the accidental introduction of exotic predators, disease, wildfire, invasive alien plant species and natural hazards. The new policy will act on the scope of the Environment Management Act and clearly spells out the management of the endangered iguanas, the management of invasive species that threaten the survival of these iguanas and also sets out initiatives to stop the illegal trade of the species. Protecting these iguanas is a huge task and this policy will help us in our work to conserve and protect them and their environment. The launch of this policy is in line with the commemoration of International Biodiversity Week, which Fiji is celebrating this week. Eleanor Turangaiwiu, FBC News. Dudley High School's online learning platform is now being accessed by regional students. School manager Thomas Prasad says this was unexpected. However, they want to ensure students make up for lost time due to the pandemic restrictions. Prasad says the program available on the school's Facebook page is targeted at Year 12 and 13 students. He adds students from other schools can also take advantage of the classes. We didn't expect um, our page uh, to reach uh, the regional uh, countries, but uh, since we had launched uh, uh, today is the 10th day, uh, we do understand with the feedbacks that we've received that they have accessed a lot of our, um, our, our maths and English platform. A few families in Nandi that are currently in need of assistance due to the impacts of COVID-19 were all smiles today as they received a box of essential food and other items. The Rotary Club of Lautoka continues to reach out to Fijians that are currently unemployed and desperate to provide for their families. Philippe Naikaso has more. It may not seem like much for the Rotary Club of Lautoka, but to these Fijians, it's more than enough to assist them during these troubled times. Uh, some of our groups have traveled all the way from Lombasa, so they find it hard to, uh, to, to survive here without any, uh, any work. Uh, and uh, any small thing would be good. And, and just uh, them, the Rotary Club bringing, bringing things over has helped a lot, at least for the next few weeks. Makarata Mbale Londoni, a former South Sea Cruise director, was also grateful for the assistance provided by the Rotary Club of Lotoka. I didn't really expect the assistance. This will be a huge help for my family in the next few weeks, especially with the food items. Since the impacts of the pandemic, the club has so far assisted 50 families in the Western Division. Some people don't have um, you know, food for their children and their babies, and it's just hard time, so it's uh, really tugged on your heartstrings to see the need out there and I mean we're trying to help as much as we can. Rotary Club is expected to receive more grants from their overseas partners as they aim to help 300 families. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. Many families have been severely affected by the effects of COVID-19, leaving sole breadwinners jobless and without financial support. Among them is a group of young men from the Western Division, laid off from their tourism jobs. The Canine brothers are making ends meet by providing general cleaning services in return for groceries and other household supplies. Venina Rakautonga has more.
Being laid off from work, left with nothing, these six men from Kenani settlement in Bar kept pushing forward to provide for their families. It's our services, like generally, whatever a family needs in order to you know, keep a house and a compound clean. Having worked all over the West for the past few weeks, they are currently in Suva in response to demand for their services. We posted up the services that we can offer. And uh, I'm amazed that uh, the very first time we posted up, there were like about 7,000 plus response. Having seen the demand of such services, the K9E brothers are considering turning this butter service into a business once the economy improves. Very soon, you'll find uh, K9E uh, brothers uh, forming into a business and, uh, you know, trying to make a living. Isora Tuva says the success of what they started is all down to hard work and perseverance of each member. We are thankful that from all the services that we have been doing, we have touched many lives, which has made them give back to us in a bigger way, and that makes us happy. Due to the increasing demand of people wanting to get their yards and houses cleaned, the K90 brothers have had full bookings throughout the week. They return to Mba tonight. Venina Rakotonga, FBC News. And Whitney joins us now with the latest in business. Thanks, Jackie. Coming up in business tonight, Red Bank refurbishes flagship store. And Nasese Roadworks yet to begin. Stay with us. My name is Neha and I'm from Kadavi. And Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Red Bank has invested almost a million dollars in redesigning its flagship branch at MECC in Suva. Chief Executive Thierry Cheres Gillett, while reopening the branch this morning, said the initiative is in line with their new customer service strategy. This reorganization will enhance service and ensure customers maintain physical distancing as per the government directive. We have invested over 2 million Fijian dollars in renovating our branches, which is a testament of our, confidian, of our confidence in the Fijian economy. During the challenging times presented by COVID-19, it's a good example of how investment can support the employment of workers and the economy. The upgrading of approximately 2.9 kilometers of Queen Elizabeth Drive has resumed. Fiji Rose Authority Chief Executive Jonathan Moore confirms there were some environmental issues which put the work on hold. Moore says those issues have been resolved and they have advised contractors to resume work if COVID-19 safety measures are strictly adhered to. He adds, apart from this, there has been a general slowdown in capital project due to the social distancing restrictions. We have an issue, an environmental issue at necessity with some of the mangrove areas, which has now been resolved. Um, but there is a general slowdown in the capital works project because of accessibility, lockdowns and things around the coronavirus. Um, but we're not seeing that as a reason to stop work. We still have to carry on. What we're saying to our contractors is, you have a contract to deliver, you, you need to deliver it. We now join from HFC Bank with the latest from the money markets. The U.S. dollar held gains against major currencies today as worries about renewed diplomatic tensions between the U.S. and China supported safe haven demand for the greenback. The yuan nursed losses in offshore trade, but further declines may be limited in the local session today as Chinese officials unveil new economic stimulus measures. Meanwhile, Japan's core consumer prices fell for the first time in more than three years in April on an annual basis as weak oil prices and pandemic measures heightened deflation risk. The Aussie dollar declined 0.4% yesterday, and as long as market risk appetite remains muted, the Aussie dollar could struggle to find any particular rallying point. Also, if U.S.-China relations fail to show signs of mellowing in the days ahead, Fears of a fresh trade row could easily drive Australian dollar exchange rates to shed further ground. That's all for this week from HFC Bank, Vinaka.
Turning to today's exchange rates as set this morning, the Fijian dollar strengthened against the Chinese yuan, the Australian and Kiwi dollars, as well as the euro. It fell against the U.S. dollar, the PNG Kina, and the Japanese yen. On to the commodities market, crude oil rose slightly to end the day at $33.77 per barrel. Gold down again to $1,720.50 an ounce, while silver also fell to $17.36 per ounce. That's it from business tonight. We now join Jamie with the latest in sports. Naka Whitney and good evening in sports tonight. Plans for Skipper Cup to kick off in July. And cautious return for Squash PG. This and more coming up. Bola, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Plans are in place for the Skipper Cup competition to kick off in July. Fiji Rugby Union Chief Executive John O'Connor says a tentative date was decided at the FRU board meeting earlier this week. However, it will only be finalized once sporting competitions are given the green light. Akula Dama reports. If COVID-19 restrictions are cleared on the 1st of next month, the FRU will start its skipper competition on the 11th of July to give teams a chance to prepare. According to our return to play protocols, uh, because of player welfare, the minimum requirement for uh, the minimum requirement for for training is four weeks. Eh? The FRU also has a plan B if games will be played in empty stadiums. We're looking at options. Eh? Um, if there is no crowd allowed, then um, we could we are really looking at the format for Fair Brother Challenge. Eh? At the moment, the safety of players and fans is paramount. As soon as you decide uh, there's a manageable risk to resuming recreation contact sports, I'll be the one to let you know. And uh, when it's safe to do so, we will resume full-scale sporting tournaments in a way that puts the well-being of our fans and athletes first. The Skipper Cup will run simultaneously with the Waterfone Vanua Championship, according to the FRU. Akuila Dama, FBC Sports. The junior flying Fijians will not compete at the 2020 Oceania Rugby Under-20 Championships in Australia. Getting players back onto the court will not be simple for Squash Fiji as they look to return to action safely. Squash Fiji President Blair McCaskill says given the uncertain nature of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, the Federation will need to lay out precautionary measures for players as they adapt to the new norm. Just minor things such as, you know, no handshaking, no, no hugging, uh, drinking from your own water bottle and not drinking from taps and fountains, keeping to singles games, uh, bringing your own rackets, and no, not sharing, washing, washing hands immediately after leaving the court, um, keeping spectator numbers below 20. Japan is insisting it will work with the International Olympic Committee to host the Tokyo Games next year. It comes after the head of the IOC admitted the event could be cancelled altogether. Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp has described his return to training like the first day of school. Premier League clubs are back on deck as work continues towards a restart next month, but not everybody in the league is excited to return yet. That's it from Sports Tonight. Coming up in Weird and Wonderful, a Donald Trump-looking tea infuser. This and more after the break. Hola, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. In new media tonight, a number of countries are developing apps that can detect early signs of COVID-19. The latest is being touted as being able to help people identify the disease at its earliest stage. And Angie joins us now with the latest in weather. to you and welcome to the weather world it's friday by our side truly exciting 
Well, the weather lately hasn't been that exciting. It was rather grey and a cloudy start across the country. Now, checking out the other centres, in the west, it mainly stayed dry. There is 80% chance that a few showers will develop. Eastwards from Pak Haba to Suva, cloudy spells will dominate with high possibility of overnight showers. And up north, I guess the dull gloomy spells will follow suit. At sea, southeast winds remain at 15 to 20 knots, moderate seas. Turning to the tides, low tide at 11.58 p.m. with high tide at 6.11 a.m. Sunrise at 6.26. For tomorrow, it's the weekend and it normally flies away, so make the most of it. The weather will not be a bother, so we are good. Tomorrow stems, there is nothing to worry about. Some centers may hit up to 34 degrees. And looking further on to Sunday, very light showers will follow the trend, but apart from those few odd sprinkles, everything looks perfectly fine. That's all the jolly weather news. It's back to Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, are you looking forward to the return of Super Rugby and the NRL? Yes, I'm really looking forward to the resumption of the NRL season and uh, Super Rugby Aotearoa. Uh, looking forward for the rugby as uh, I hope uh, there won't be any restriction on gathering. And we look forward for the game. I think uh, maybe the Super Rugby and NRL will start again. I'm not too sure. Hopefully things uh, get uh, well around the globe, uh, knowing the restrictions are around. And, uh, Let's uh, get uh, rolling with uh, NRL and uh, Super Rugby season. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, U.S. President Donald Trump is a famous name all around the world. Now he can also be classed as a tea infuser. Recapping the main stories for tonight, expanded FNPF payouts due to COVID-19. Man charged for alleged electoral offences. And UK rejects Fijian troops' claims. Now for these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question that we're asking, do you agree with LTA's compulsory online registration of driving license holders? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, it's been sunny in the Western Division with most of the flowers blossoming. This was taken by Kilera Magoon of Lautoka. And you can send us newsworthy pictures to email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj. Share it with us on our FBC News Facebook page and Twitter page at fbc underscore news. That's your news for tonight. Until tomorrow, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Mother Mamba. Toka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.